Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. So we're moving on to more of the Doom board game today and we're gonna knock out the revenants here. I love these miniatures. I absolutely adore these particular models right here. They're just so darn straightforward to paint, but they look so satisfying. They are just a blast to paint. I love them. They're probably my favorites. So without any further ado, let's just get to it. All right, so we will have started with a first layer of Dragon Red. You can use a regular paint like I have right here that comes with your regular Army Painter Mega Paint set. Uh, or you can use the Spray Primer because that particular color is available as a primer if you want to get that. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you can do a Spray Primer or you can do a Brush Primer, but we're going to start with a Dragon Red color here. And the other thing that I did too was I just used some matte black there to get the bases knocked out. You can do that before or after, it doesn't really matter, just whatever you prefer. And the revenants are going to be the first miniatures in which we will be utilizing very prominent dry brushing techniques. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out some of that barbarian flesh color. We're gonna use that to dry brush basically all of the skeletal bits of the revenant. So you want to use a dry brush. I have right here an actual Army Painter dry brush. You don't necessarily have to get this brand, although, you know, it's whatever, whatever you prefer, whatever is your fancy. Now, if you don't have an actual dry brush like this, you can just use kind of like a flat chisel kind of brush. So, like, I've got a good example right here. This one's a little bit small, but uh, you could use this sort of thing right here uh, in its place. You know, it's, it's, it's just kind of whatever. All right, and to go over what we were talking about with dry brushing, what you're going to do is you're going to take your dry brush, you're going to take your brush, and you're going to just lightly sort of nudge it into your paint puddle, just a little bit. And you're going to wipe off most of it. That's why they call it dry brushing, is because you have such a small amount of paint on the brush that it is almost dry. We're going to be utilizing this very clearly for the revenants, as you will see. So here we're just getting a lot of paint on there, wiping off most of it, making sure that it's... Uh, semi-dry, you don't want it to be dripping wet by any means. Okay, and there we go, we've got a nice nice amount of paint under the brush there. Alright, so why don't, we, uh, why don't we start with the face. The Revenants have, you know, kind of a bloody base, but they've got like some skin barely left on them. And this dry brushing technique works really well for that. It gives that sort of look of like, skin is still there, kind of, but it's just barely hanging on in a lot of ways. It's just, it's very, you know, peely and and bloody and flesh-like. Dry brushing is a great way to get that effect across. You're mostly just gonna do the, uh, the front of the Revenant's face. All right. Like so, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for right there. You want it to be, you kind of want that sort of dusty look from dry brushing. That's kind of what you're looking for, actually. And we're gonna do the same thing with the legs. The base of the legs, like the calves and the actual feet are pretty much entirely skin tone. So feel free to, to really go at it whenever you're doing the base of the legs. But as you work your way up, as you get more toward the thighs and the hips and all that, it's gonna become a little bit more bloody. So you'll actually kind of lessen up, you know, lighten up a little bit on your dry brushing the further you move up the leg. All right, now, uh, here's an important thing to go with, uh, to note with dry brushing. Whenever you're doing it, you always want to make your, your strokes um, perpendicular to a lot of the low contour lines. So there are some really, really well-defined contour lines here um, on the Revenant's leg. And that's uh, the shin bone sort of sticking out. See these, these two long lines on either side of the shin that really separates them? You want to go perpendicular to those lines, like this. Okay? You do not want to go parallel with, to them, like this. Because the whole point of dry brushing is that you get a fair amount of paint onto the high contours, you know, all of the high recesses of, of the miniature, but the low recesses are going to sort of remain the base color. Uh, you get the same sort of thing right here with his ankle. You can kind of see his ankle there. You want to you keep those lines nice and defined, just like that. 
And then with his toes, you're going to move across his toes like this. All right, and that's the kind of thing that you're looking for right there. See, that looks pretty great, okay. And like I said, you're going to sort of lighten up a little bit the further you go up the leg. So just sort of lightly, you know, kind of start to move up the leg, but don't go too crazy. You're going to want a little bit of fleshy skin tone up there, but not much. All right. A little something like that. That looks pretty good. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with the other leg here. Yeah, now that I'm doing this uh, in person, actually, it, you might save the bases for the last thing that you do, actually, just because as you're dry brushing, you're probably going to get a little bit of that skin tone on the base itself. You can kind of see it on, on his left foot. You can kind of see it on the base right there. It's not a huge deal. It's just kind of whatever, you know, you prefer. So you might save the bases for later, or if you want to just knock them out ahead of time, you can do that, too. I don't think it'll be a huge deal. Man, I love dry brushing. Something about the technique is just so instantly gratifying. Something about it, it just, you're, you're in control basically the whole time. I love it. I really, really like dry brushing a lot. For a long time, for many years actually, all I did was just dry brushing techniques. That's all I did for all of my shading. I didn't use any shades. I didn't use washes or anything like that. I just used dry brushing for virtually everything that I did. And, you know, in a lot of ways, it, it's sort of, made me be a lot more creative about how I approached shading and that kind of thing. But uh, man, having having those liquid quick shades really does make things a lot easier. But yeah, I'm just, I, I love dry brushing. It's, there's, like I said, there's, there's something about it that's just instantly gratifying that, you know, I just love. Okay. And there you go. So now you've got the, the skin going up the legs there just like that. That looks pretty cool. All right, we're also going to do a fair amount on the back because even though like kind of kind of like the hips and especially the guts there on his bottom are kind of kind of uh, ready they're they're all red and bloody. His actual back is has has some actual skin on it. So we'll go ahead and do this. Now, one thing that you're going to notice while I'm doing this and while you do it yourself is that if you do this you're gonna get some of the flesh tone on all of the cyber bits, like the jetpack right here, as well as all as well as all of these little cyber bits on the side. Not a huge deal because we're just gonna go over those completely with a metallic color later on. So don't worry about it. Totally fine. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the arms. Well, we're going to have the hands be a little bit more prominent with the skin tone and we'll sort of leave it red the further we get closer to, you know, his shoulders and his chest. All right, and that's the kind of thing that we're looking for as far as the Revenant's skin tone. That looks pretty darn cool. That already resembles the, the Revenant pretty darn well. All right, so we're just gonna do that with both of the other two. There are only three Revenants in this board game. All right, and then that is pretty much all that there is to it for the Revenants. Those are already looking pretty darn cool, if I don't say so myself. I get a little bit of focus there. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's coming along pretty cool. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just get started on all those cyber bits. So what we'll move on to is a metallic color. So let's go ahead and use some shining silver for all of our cyber bits. That'll, that'll include the cyber armor as well as the rocket launchers and all that good stuff. 
So for the armor itself, it doesn't really matter what type of brush that you use, so I'll just use, you know, a kind of bigger no-name brush right here. Uh, you might want to use a smaller brush, though, when you get to the individual cyber bits, like on the arms as well as on the, the legs and all that. So first I'll go ahead and knock out the jetpack. Alright, so now that you've got the jetpack all on there, you're going to go ahead and focus on the various cyber bits, kind of on the arms and legs. And to do that, we are going to use a slightly smaller brush. You can probably use the brush that just comes with the regular Army Painter Mega Paint set. If you don't have that though, you can use, you know, any other type of brush. Here I've got a, a Reaper brand, uh, just standard size brush, I think. It's not a small one or anything like that, but uh, it's smaller than a lot of other brushes that you can get. And you just want something that gives you a little bit more manual dexterity, a little bit more maneuverability when it comes to the details. Just because you want to try to avoid getting this metallic color onto all of the skin tone and all that. You really, really want this metallic color to pop. And so just make sure that you get... Uh, you know, all, all the details relatively correct here. The Revenants are actually so, probably one of my favorite miniatures to paint from the Doom board game, if not just my favorite miniatures to paint, because they're not terribly difficult, and I get to use my dry brushing technique that I really, really like, but they're, they're also just, they look great. It's just, they're, they're easy to paint, and they look fantastic, and you get to do a little bit of everything. You get you get to do a little bit of detail work, but nothing too insane, nothing too crazy or difficult. Uh, and you get to use, you know, dry brushing, which I just, I love doing. I just love dry brushing. I always have. But yeah, just kind of going over all the different metallic bits here. All right, so there's like the entirety of one leg right there. That's pretty good. That already makes it makes it look pretty decent. We're gonna add a shade to add some some contrast to all of those little cyber bits. But right off the bat, that's looking pretty cool. For the other leg here, he's just got kind of one on his foot. And then we get kind of into weird territory with the kneecap because it seems like the knee has a lot going on. Let's take a look at that. Okay, now there's obviously, you know, some level of cybernetic stuff going on there. It's just kind of a matter of figuring out what goes there. I kind of think that this sort of side piece on the right side of his leg is cybernetic, so let's make that. Nice and metallic, and I think it kind of goes into his leg there, like that. And we're going to do this similar sort of thing on the left side of his knee. Alright, it looks like he's got kind of a contraption or brace kind of coming up like this. All right, and then I think the very top of his knee has a little bit of a piece on it, too. So let's just get that. And there you go. That's that's pretty good right there, I would say. I think that that pretty well covers up the knee. I think that the knee itself, like the kneecap and the shin, is still kind of like original bone. So I would just leave that unpainted, and that should look pretty okay. All right, next up, let's go ahead and get, he's got sort of like little bolts on the side of his hip. One right there like that. Uh, and he doesn't have one on the other side, but that's because he's got, you know, this whole contraption coming up the side there. And let's get side of this just a little bit. Like so, all right, there we go. All right. So now we're going to look at the arms, and there's a big prominent sort of elbow pad on the back here. Alright, and then he's got some big wiring coming up on the sides of his arms. And you can probably just go over it with a single layer, like so. There we go, that looks pretty cool just like that. 
And then he's got kind of a wire going all the way up from his shoulder, and as, as well as kind of a bolt on the side, like that. We'll get the wire coming down. All right, and he's got kind of a wire coming out in between his thumb and his finger there just a little bit. All right, there we go. It's got kind of like kind of two wires going up his arm just a little bit there. I don't know if that's just a molding imperfection or if I'm just looking at that wrong, but uh, that seems about right to me. And then that will pretty much do it for all of the metallic bits. So the big points of focus is that you want to get the, the leg, you want to get the kneecap, the little thing on his foot right here. You want to get just the single kind of wire going on the side, the elbow pad. You want to get the, the wires on the right side here, which, again, maybe those are more just a molding imperfection, but, uh, yeah, whatever. And then you want to get the little thing on his thumb, which I can probably do a little bit of a better job on. There we go, that's pretty good. Okay, uh, and then you wanna get the wire coming up to his side like that. And then you wanna do just obviously the main jetpack itself, but that's a little bit more straightforward. And then that's pretty much it. So you're just gonna do that with all of the other ones. Alright, so there we go. Now we've got our Revenants with their with their bloody, fleshy skin tone as well as all of the cyber bits all over their bodies. Their jetpacks, their you know, various components and all that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Alright, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some shade to the various cyber bits that we just did. So we'll go ahead and use our regular dark tone for this. I wouldn't use the strong tone or the flesh, flesh wash or anything like that just because the the mechanical bits you probably want to have just uh, sort of cold and, and metallic and sort of separate from the various organic bits. And so if you just have a black shade for that, that will probably help for that effect. Is this the one that I just painted? Yeah, that one's still pretty wet. So let's start with another one here. And be a little bit careful. You're not going to go over the entire miniature with each application here. You're just going over, like I said, all of the mechanical bits. All of the cybernetic components, the jetpack, all that good stuff. Alright, so there we've just got the jetpack on one of him. And we're gonna go ahead and do the rest to the various bits. Again, try to try to avoid getting it getting this quick shade on the rest of the flesh. Even if you do, I mean it's not gonna be a huge deal. It's just if you and if you want to also, you can just go over the whole thing with this dark tone if you want also. It's probably not gonna hurt anything too badly, but I just kind of want some shade with the cyber bits and I kind of want the flesh tone that we have to still have that even layer that we've already applied to it because I think that uh, it's already got a pretty, pretty cool uh, series of layers and coloring on it. There we go, that's the sort of thing that we're looking at right there. And that will just add some extra shade to all of the side... Oh, I forgot his foot. I forgot his right foot here. Let's just add a little bit there, and that will separate from his body just a little bit. There we go, yeah, and so that will just sort of separate all of the cybernetic components from the rest of the body, and that gives us a pretty good layer right there. So that's great. So now we're just going to do that with all of the other ones. After that, um, I, I would say just let them dry if you want. Uh, you can probably move on to the next step, uh, which I'll get to you know as soon as I finish up here, uh, because I don't think it's really going to matter. What we're going to do after this is we're going to do some detail work. We kind of just want to sharpen up the face a little bit, and so we're going to just be using some uh, regular precise uh, you know, a little little pinpoint techniques and all that, that that we'll get onto. So if you uh, so go ahead and do this quick shade right here, and then you can let it dry, or you can just go right on to the next step. Doesn't really matter; it's up to you. But let's get this on there and move on. 
All right, now in terms of just getting everything table ready, I would say that that's pretty much all that you need minimum. I think that if you were to use these as your revenants for the board game, you'd be in pretty good shape. But let's let's go a little bit uh, let's go a little bit more special and let's add some some detail work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this elven flesh color right here, and we're going to use this to just dot some teeth and some nails. The Revenants have very, very prominent faces, so if you have their faces just kind of blank like that, it might look a little bit flat. So if you just want to take a little bit of a sort of brighter flesh tone, you can use that to just dot each little tooth. And that will just add a little bit more to your miniature. I'm just going to use the regular brush that came with the uh, Army Painter Mega Paint set. Doesn't really matter what brush that you use, as long as what you use is just uh, just has a really, really nice sharp point to it. Oh, and another thing that I did too, I didn't show this uh, on camera earlier. I actually used that dark wash, that dark quick shade, or the dark tone, and put it in the mouth, and that just darkened up the mouth a little bit. Now that does, that's for a couple of reasons. The first is simply because, you know, the, the mouth is supposed to be kind of dark. There's not a lot of light getting to the inside of the mouth. So that makes sense from that perspective. Secondly, if you do go over the mouth with that dark tone, it, it'll act and, and like around it and all that, that'll actually bring out the teeth just a little bit. If I can focus here, you can kind of see a little bit more prominently where the teeth are at, and you can use that as a, uh, as a sort of guide for where to use more of this elven flesh color right here. There we go, so that's just a, a nice top row of teeth right there. And we'll just get the bottom row, and you just want a little, little, itty bitty, teeny tiny amount of paint on your brush. You barely want any paint on the tip of your brush. Uh, if you want to, you can water it down a little bit too, and that will just be able to let you apply some with a, with a little bit of a smaller dot. That's up to you. I, I tend to just use the consistency that comes straight out of the bottle, but that's up to you if you want to thin the paint down with a little bit of water, or if you don't. And there we go. That just gives him a nice, really, really prominent row of teeth. Rows of teeth right there. That looks pretty darn good. And the last thing that I'm gonna do with each individual one is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, paint all of the toenails and fingernails. And it's just gonna be a little bit of extra detail on there that isn't going to be too prominent or too weird or distracting, but it's gonna be just a, you know, it's just gonna be the icing on top. It's just gonna be a little bit of a mwah, uh, chef's kiss, if you will, uh, for the miniature just to have that little tiny bit of extra detail on there. There we go, that looks great. Then we'll do the same thing with the hands. Just get a little bit onto the hands and that will kind of give the sort of look that he's got fingernails. All right. And like I said, that just gives a little bit of extra detail to the miniature itself. All right, so we're gonna just do that for all of them here. All right, and that will about do it for all of the claws and teeth and such. Those look great. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glow up those eyes just a little bit. Now there are a couple of things that you can do with this color that I'm going to use right here. So what I'm taking out is the demonic yellow color, which just works so darn well for Doom. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get the centers of the eyes right there. Now, if if you did the dry brushing technique, then the eyes should still be pretty pretty red. Like, that's a good example right there. They're pretty red. Got a little bit of the skin tone into this one, but that's okay. So if you have, like, a red a red sort of start, and then you go over the center with this yellow color, that should give it a nice glowing sort of look.
All right, that kind of thing right there, that's what we're looking for. If you want also, I'll go ahead and do it here. You can just go ahead and get the, uh, the tips of the shoulder-mounted cannons. If you want to just leave those as black, or leave those as the, as the you know, steel color that you have, that silver color, as well as the, uh, the dark tone, that'll probably be fine, but I'll just go ahead and do this for a little bit of, uh, a little bit of extra credit. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'll go ahead and do it. You can even do the same thing with the back, actually, because this these are supposed to be sort of like a, a jetpack right here, and I think that there's supposed to be like some energy sort of coming out of the back here. So if you want, you can go over it with some yellow as well. All right, just like that, like so. So now you've got a nice glowing kind of bit there from the jetpack as well as the uh, the eyes and the arm and the uh, shoulder cannons there. And if you want, you can do the, the chest piece here too. Sure, let's go ahead and do the, the center chest piece. This one's not as big of a deal, but if you want to, if you want to just do it for the sake of doing it, I would encourage you to do so. There we go, just like that. And that is pretty much all that you need for the revenants. So let's just do that with the other ones. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a layer of, I, I think that the, the revenants are kind of wet and bloody looking. So we'll use the gloss varnish on it, on them whenever we're done here. But yeah, just go ahead and get the, uh, the yellow going for the eyes. The eyes I would say is the, are the most important part. You can do the, uh, the extra bits, like you can do the you know, shoulder cannons. You can do the uh, the shoulder-mounted cannons there, and you can do the uh, the back of the of the jetpack and the center or whatever. You don't have to if you don't want to, though. So if you just want to leave it like that, that should be just fine. But yeah, that'll be it. And then after that, we're gonna use our gloss varnish, and then we're done. All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. Those are the revenants from the Doom board game. All right, so like I said, the last thing that I did was I went over all of them with a layer of that gloss varnish. The only thing that's a little bit different was I used regular matte varnish for the bases right there, and that's just so that they would match with the other bases that we've already painted so far. Another thing that I did too before doing that was I went back over the bases with another layer of black, just because all the dry brushing that we did, there was a little bit of a dusty sort of coat of that flesh color on there. So if you just go over that with some black again, that'll that'll help you out. Or if you just paint the bases at the end of the miniatures rather than before like I did and that will work out just fine for you. So there you go. If you like the video, go ahead and throw it a like. If you want to see the rest of the Doom board game being painted, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's not a lot else to do. I'm going to knock out the Barons of Hell and the Mancubi and then the Cyber Demon. We've only got all of the large miniatures to go after this. So you've got those to look forward to. And after I finish painting the Doom board game, I'm going to move on to the Resident Evil 2 board game, I think. And that should be a lot of fun. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I am at Paint-A-Mini on Twitter. I'll post some miniature stuff. I'll po post... I'll, I'll post a lot of random things, but, I, but I'll try to paint, you know, post some mini painting stuff on there from time to time so you have that to look forward to. So thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a good night.